Shavua Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Bava Kama, we are up to Perak Bet Mishnah Aleph, today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'elun Nishmad, Neria Ben Svedlana Aranbaev, Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael, Ovchana Bad Meriam, Sasson Ben Rayan, Yoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, Elavde Ben Chaim Lechaim, Velerefua Shenemab, Daniel Shenon Ben Roza, Betor Shachol Yisrael. As explained in the last Mishnah of the previous chapter, the owner of an animal that did damage must pay full compensation only if the animal is a mu'ad for that damage. It listed five situations in which an animal is a mu'ad. These are A, damaged by means of walking regel, B, damaged by means of eating shen, C, keren damage after three times, D, keren damage in the property of the victim, E, damage done by a person, Adam Mazik. This chapter will elaborate upon each of these cases, beginning with Regel. Ketzad Regel Mu'edet, in what case is an animal a Mu'ad with regard to Regel? Lishaber Bedeh Chilucha, an animal is a Mu'ad to break things with its feet by stepping on them in the course of its walking. Habema Mu'edet Lealech Kedarkah Mshaber, an animal is a Mu'ad to walk in its normal way and break things with any other part of its body or with an item that it is carrying. In all these situations, therefore, the owner must pay full damage. Full damages. Now, although the Mishnah itself does not explain the difference between the first case, to break in the course of its walking, and the second case, to walk in its normal way and break, the first case is interpreted as referring to the Av primary case of Regel, which is damaging with the feet, while the second case is interpreted as referring to the Toradot, the derived cases of Regel, which include damaging with other parts of the body or with things that it's carrying. For example, its body brushes up against the wall and knocks it over. The Mishnah now presents two cases where an animal does damage with its feet, and yet the owner pays only half of the victim's loss. Haytam if it was kicking with intent to damage, or or if pebbles were flying out from under its feet in the course of its normal walking, and in each of these circumstances it broke utensils, the owner pays only half damages in the first of these two situations, he pays only half because the animal intended to damage, which makes it a case of keren. The first three times an animal does keren damage, the owner pays for half the damage as taught in chapter 1, Mishnah 4. And although the Mishnah is about regel, this particular case is one of keren. And in the second situation, he pays only half because the damage was inflicted not by the animal's body itself, but by the pebbles that flew out from under its feet. Now normally, there is no difference between damage done directly with the body of a person or animal or something attached to the body and damage done by something to which the body gave force. For example, a stone that a person threw. Either way, the damager is fully liable. This principle is called kocho ki gufo. His force is like his body. In the laws of regel, however, there is a difference between an animal's body or something attached to it and its force. If damage was done by the animal's body, for example, it stepped on something, the owner pays in full, but if damage was done by something to which the animal gave force, such as pebbles that accidentally kicked, or that just flew out from under its feet, the owner needs to pay only half. This law, which is known as Sirorot Pebbles, was taught to Moshe Rabbeinu at Mount Sinai, and passed down through the generations from, one, from teacher to student, as the Gemara says on page 17b, in Mesechet Bava Kama. Since damage to pebbles falls under the category of Regel, payment is required only if the incident happened in the property of the victim, and not in public property. The case is therefore different from the previous one, kicking with intent to damage, which is Kevin, and where payment is required even if the damage occurred in a public place. In the following case, an animal did damage both with its body and with something that it caused to move. If it stepped on a vessel and broke it, and a piece of the vessel flew out, fell on another vessel and broke it, the law is as follows. For the first vessel which the animal stepped on, the owner pays full damages. But for the last vessel, which was broken by a piece of the first one, the owner pays only half damages, since the animal damaged the second vessel now with its body. But with something to which it gave force, only half damages need to be paid. Now the Mishnah applies these laws to birds, even though the examples given in the Torah are animals that damage, other verses teach that the same laws apply to birds as well. Chickens are muadin to walk in their normal way and break vessels, and therefore full payment must be made for the damage. However, if there was an object tied to a chicken's leg, now the word delil refers to anything that is attached to the leg of a chicken. In some versions of the Mishnah's text, 
The word deli, which means bucket. The word is deli, which means bucket. But again, our Mishnah's text is Hayat Dilin Kashuba Aglav. If there was an object tied to a chicken's leg, or Shayam Ades, or if it was hopping on its feet, Um Shaberet Akelim, and it broke vessels because either the object or the chicken's feet caused pebbles to fly out and hit the vessels. Mishalem Chatzinezik, the owner pays for only half the damage because it was the pebbles and not the bird itself or anything attached to it that broke the vessels. Now, in the case of the object tied to the chicken's leg, the mazik, the damager, pays half only if the object hit pebbles and it was the pebbles that did the damage, since the damage was not done by the chicken's body, but rather by something to which the chicken gave force the pebbles, half payment is enough, but if the object that was tied to the chicken did the damage, full payment would be required because anything attached to or carried by an animal has the same law as its body. And that is the end of Mishnah Aleph. Mishnah Bed explains the next category listed in chapter 1, Mishnah 4, which is Shen, Damage done by an animal in the course of eating. Ketzad the Shen Mu'edet. In what cases an animal on Mu'ad with regard to Shen? Le'cholat ha'roi la an animal is Mu'ad to eat food that is suitable for it. Ha'bema Mu'edet le'chol perot virakot and the animal is Mu'ad to eat fruits and vegetables. The second statement an animal is Mu'ad to eat fruits and vegetables does not seem to add anything to the previous one, which is an animal is Mu'ad to eat food that is suitable for it. The Gemara on page 17b in Masechet Barak Kama explains the Mishnah makes two similar statements to allude to the fact that the laws of damage is applied to both domestic animals like sheep and wild animals like deer. Although the Torah always uses examples of domestic animals, the Mishnah teaches that the laws are the same for wild animals. Therefore, if someone's animals ate another person's fruit, vegetables, or any other suitable food, its owner must pay full damages. Achlach is suit o kelim, however, if you eat clothing or utensils, Meshalem Chatzinezik, he pays only half damages, since an animal does not usually eat clothing or utensils. This is not a case of Shen, but a case of unusual damage, which is Keren, and when an animal does Keren damage the first three times, only half payment is required. Now, having taught that the owner must pay in full for Shen damage, the Mishnah limits this law. The Medvarim Amuim, in what case does this apply? Bilshut and Isaac, it applies when the animal ate in a place that belongs to the victim of the damage. But if it in a public place, its owner is exempt from payment. One does not have to pay for regular shen damage unless the damage was done on the property of the victim. The Mishnah's case is where the animal ate suitable foods such as fruits and vegetables. If it ate clothing utensils which is cabin damage, the owner would have to pay even if the incident occurred in a public place. Nevertheless, even when it ate in a public place, if it benefited from the food and the owner can therefore feed it less than usually, it pays the value of what it benefited. Since he saved the money he would have spent to buy that amount of animal food, he must pay for that benefit. Although the owner does not have to pay for causing, he must pay for what he benefited. It is a general rule that whenever someone benefits from the property of another and thereby causes the owner some loss, he must pay at least for the benefit. In our case, where the animal ate fruits or vegetables, the owner benefited in that he saved the money he would have spent on an equivalent amount of barley, which is a common animal food. He must therefore pay the victim the value of that amount of barley. He does not have to pay more, even if the food he ate was expensive, was more expensive than barley. If it ate food that is harmful, he does not have to pay anything, since he had no benefit. The Mishnah elaborates, Ketzad Mishlem Mashenenet, in what case does he pay only what it benefited, if it ate food in the middle of the street, he pays only what it benefited since that is a public place. But if it ate food from the sides of the street where animals do not usually walk, he pays in full for what it damaged. Since the owner of the food had a right to put it at the side of the street where animals do not usually go, it is as if the animal entered the victim's property, in which case full payment is required. A similar pair of rulings, if an animal ate food from the area in front of the entrance to a store, the animal's owner pays only what it benefited because that is a public place. Storekeepers would display food on tables or they would set up in the public area in front of their stores where animals would walk. And again, in that case, because it's a public area, the animal's owner pays only what it benefited. But if it entered a store and ate food from inside the store, he pays for what it damaged since the store is the victim's property. And that is one of the of today's Mishnah Everybody should have a Shavuot Tov. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.